Florence is a city full of charm and beauty, beloved by travelers and art enthusiasts alike. From its ancient buildings to the beautiful arteries of cobblestones that weave between them, Florence has something for everyone. Whether you plan on spending just a few days in this Tuscan capital or an entire week exploring all the sights it holds, your visit is sure to be an unforgettable one. Today we're taking a look at some of the top things to do in Florence. From visiting iconic landmarks like Point Fiacchio Bridge and the Uffizi Museum to enjoying a delicious gelato. Before we start, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date in all our travel vlogs from around the world. No trip to Florence is complete without visiting the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, or more commonly known as the Duomo. Completed in 1434, it is the most important landmark in Florence, as well as being the fourth largest church in the world. Most notable is its imposing dome crafted by Brunelleschi. Brunelleschi pushed the limits of what architecture could achieve by using new techniques to reduce the weight of a massive structure. With over 4 million bricks weighing over 40,000 tons, it's almost the size of half a football field across the base. And standing over 10 stories high, it is the largest masonry structure in the world. Right beside the Duomo is the equally stunning Baptistry of St. John. It traces its roots to the 4th century, making it one of the oldest buildings in the city. Be sure to check out its famous bronze doors, sculpted intrinsically by Lorenzo Ghiberti. A stone's throw away, you'll find the enchanting Piazza della Repubblica. This square marks the ancient heart of Florence. It was originally the site of the city's Roman form, then of its old ghetto, which was swept away during the city's improvement works. Relive your childhood and take a spin round and round on the painted ponies of the antique carousel. It dates from the 20th century and has been owned by the same family for over four generations. It is made of wood and consists of 20 horses and two king carriages. Next up is the Fontana del Porcolino, a bronze fountain of a wild boar sculpted in 1634. Legend has it, if you stroke il Porcolino's snout, you will return to Florence. For luck, throw a coin into the grid between the boar's legs. Next is the Piazza della Signoria, arguably the most beautiful square in all of Italy. This square was the epicenter of Florentine political life In the center of the square, just under the Palazzo Vecchio, we find the beautiful Fountain of Neptune, sculpted by Bartolomeo Amanetti and Gemma Bologna between 1563 and 65. To its right is Michelangelo's David, which depicts David's victory over Goliath. The original can be found at the Accademia Gallery. Next is the Palazzo Vecchio, a symbol of the civil power of the city of Florence for more than seven centuries. It was the seat of the Signoria of the Florentine Republic in the 14th century and then the government center of the Medici Grand Dukes of Tuscany. Today it is a museum with iconic art frescoes from the Renaissance period, secret tunnels and Roman ruins.
Nestled to the right of the majestic Palazzo Vecchio is the Loggia di Lanzi. Among the works of art are Gian Bologna's Rape of the Sandbines and Bevinito Cellini's extraordinary Perseus holding the head of a severed Medusa. At the opposite end of the square, you will also find the Gucci Cafe. It's owned by the renowned Florentine designer brand. This upscale cocktail lounge offers an exquisite selection of signature drinks with a stunning view of the illuminated square at night. Located adjacent Piazza della Signoria is the Uffizi Gallery, one of the oldest and most famous museums in the world. It is a treasure trove of art and houses one of the most impressive collections of art. Personally, it is my favorite art museum I have visited in all my travels. The gallery entirely occupies the first and second floors of the large building constructed between 1560 and 1580 and designed by Giorgio Vasari. Start your exploration on the second floor in the room with early Italian masters Giotto and Cimabue. Follow the hall of early Renaissance painters to the unmistakable portraits of the Dukes of Urbino by Piero della Francesca. Continuing, you will find the rooms that house Botticelli's most famous works, the Allegory of Spring and the Canvas of the Birth of Venus. Continue on to works by Leonardo da Vinci, The Annunciation, which is the one and only completed panel painting by him. Michelangelo's The Tondodoni. On the first floor, you will find an array of portraits and self portraits. Don't miss works by Caravaggio, Artemisa Gentileschi, and Titian's Venus of Urbino. Close by is Ponte Viecchio, a medieval stone bridge that spans the Arno River. If you look closely, you can see the Vasari Corridor linking Palazzo Viecchio and the Uffizi to Pitti Palace on the other side of the Arno. This private corridor enabled the Medici to move freely between the seat of government and their private residence without having an escort and without having to walk among the commoners on the street. Today, Ponte Vecchio captivates visitors with its charming shops, which were once occupied by butchers, but now house exclusive jewelry stores and art galleries. Located on the south side of the River Arno, the Palazzo Pitti was once where the Medici family lived. Today, the Pitti Palace holds five museums, the most famous of which is the Galleria Palatina, with various rooms containing well-known Italian works of art. Here you will find works of art by Botticelli, Titian, Veronese, Caravaggio, and Raphael, amongst others. Directly behind P.T. Palace are the marvelous Boboli Gardens. The Medici family established a layout of the gardens, creating the Italian garden style that would become a model for many European courts. The vast green expanse with a regular layout is a real outdoor museum populated by ancient and Renaissance statues. Piazza Michelangelo is on a hill on the south bank of the Arno River, just east of the center of Florence. It gives you a beautiful 360-degree view of Florence and the surrounding area, and especially picturesque at dawn or sunset. Next up is San Minato al Monte. This basilica has been described as one of the finest Romanist churches in all of Tuscany and one of the most scenic churches in Italy. Don't miss Gelateria di Neri, one of the city's most popular gelato shops and it's a must-visit destination for anyone looking to experience the magic of Florence one scoop at a time. So you can get a couple of different flavors. I got three. I got pistachio, I also got orange, and I also have pompello rosé. Let's try out the pompello. That is so fragrant. 
<laughs> it's like a grapefruit flavor. I've never had anything quite like it. Very creamy, very citrusy, very fragrant. And the Prosecco is really good too. So is their uh, orange, but orange probably my least favorite. I really like the Pompello though. I'm good because I eat all of it. Really fast. Next up is the Basilica a Santa Croce, one of my favorite churches in all of Florence. It is situated on the Piazza di Santa Croce, about 800 meters southeast of the Duomo, on what was once marshland beyond the city walls. It was rebuilt by the Franciscan Order in 1294 by Arnolfo di Cambio. Basilica Santa Croce is the burial place of a who's who of Renaissance Florence. You will find the tomb of Michelangelo, Machiavelli, and the peace born Galileo Galli. There is also a memorial to Dante. The Basilica di San Lorenzo is one of the largest churches of Florence and is located in the center of the main market district of the city. It was rebuilt by Brunelleschi in 1419. Its uncompleted exterior was supposed to be covered by a spectacular facade by Michelangelo but due to lack of funds and other complications, the decorated covering was never added. San Lorenzo is the burial place of the famous Medici family. The Medici chapels can be entered from the back of the church. Finally, don't miss Mercato Centrale. Inside the market, you'll find all types of Tuscan specialties. There's a seafood area in which vendors sell fish, there's also a fruits and vegetable stands area, and outside of the market you can find the Mercado di San Lorenzo, which mostly sells leather goods. That's it for our top things to do in Florence. If you have any questions about where to stay, restaurants, or tips for planning your next trip to Florence, leave us a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the GoTo Family channel, and hit the bell for notifications.